This video shows you how to determine if a monosaccharide or sugar is a reducing sugar. So our question is, is this cyclic structure shown here a reducing sugar? So reducing sugars have free anomeric carbons. So that's the first thing you should look at. Where's the anomeric carbon? It's here. That's carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. And if the anomeric carbon is not attached to anything but the hydroxyl, there's no other ring attached here, then this cyclic structure can form the linear structure, which we'll just draw here. It's an aldyl hexose. Since I have six carbons, let's put the hydroxyls in. So carbon two is this one. It's on the bottom, so it'll be on the right. The next one's on the top, so that will be on the left. Next one's on the bottom, so that will be on the right. And then it's a D sugar based on the carbon six sticking up. So it'll look like that. So that's our linear form. Since it can form a linear form, it can oxidize. So that aldehyde group will get converted to a hydroxyl. And then the rest will be all the same. So if there's a free anomeric carbon, and can form carboxyl group at aldehyde. So those are our criteria. And the last thing is, can reduce something else. Which means in a color metric test like the Benedict's test, which is what I did the very first day of class in that demonstration, the sugar oxidizes, which we've just seen that can happen if you have the free aldehyde, you can make a carboxylic acid. And then the counter reaction in the Benedict's test is a copper reaction. It's copper two plus two, copper plus one. That's the reduction reaction and there's a color change. So if any of those things happen, you have a reducing sugar. So again, any cyclic monosaccharide that has a free anomeric carbon is a reducing sugar. Now let's just quickly look at a disaccharide. I'm just drawing a simple disaccharide here. Now is that structure a reducing sugar? So let's look at that one. So what are our criteria? We need a free anomeric carbon. So let's check that out first. Anomeric carbon in this case is here, carbon one. That's not attached to anything, so it's a free anomeric carbon. So this ring could form the linear form as well, and then all these things would be true. So yes, this disaccharide is a reducing sugar because one of the rings has a free anomeric carbon. The other ring, this anomeric carbon is there, and it is not free, it's um, occupied with this glycosidic linkage. So this ring cannot open and become a linear form. But since this ring can, the whole thing is considered a reducing sugar. And then one last thing we'll try, we'll try to figure out the glycosidic linkage here since we, we have a disaccharide. So we want to um, give the name for the linkage so that involves getting the numbers of the carbons in the linkage. So this is one, two, three, four. So that's gonna be carbon four. And then carbon one, two, three, four. So it's carbon one. So our numbers are one, four. And then if an anomeric carbon is in the linkage, you have to provide the Greek letter for that number. So this is the anomeric carbon. This is on the top side. This is on the bottom side. So that's an alpha. You can write alpha 1, 4, or you could write 1 alpha 4. Either way is fine. Okay, that's it. If you have questions, let me know.